Hey guys, here we are in round three. Uh, Errol Spence versus Chris Algieri in the Errol Spence versus Kell Brook film study. Um, I, I've talked a little bit about Kell Brook and his counter punching, how he likes to counter punch, lead with his straight right hand, um, and how like overall everyone can kind of see how much better uh, his Kell Brook's tools are than um, Chris Algieri, right? Chris Algieri is like a good fighter. Um, He's got good strategies, and he, he does a lot of things really well. He's just, his tools aren't up to par um, for, for his skills. Uh, so he kind of gets, you know, I'll be honest, like in this fight, he kind of does look like a, like a little bit of a clown and an amateur. Um, but, um, <clears throat> but uh, Errol Spence does do a lot of things that he shouldn't be doing, um, like... Um, the holding and hitting, like, like being the the biggest problem that I have with uh, with Errol Spence and his his uh, skills, right? But also, uh, Errol Spence is very predictable. You know, so far he's had one go-to combination, and that was uh, jab feint, jab feint, uh, establish lead foot dominance, and then throw a straight, uh, not a straight uh, left, but a left uppercut. Uh, to the body and a right hook to the body, um, and those have been like nearly the only punches that he's landed uh, throughout the course of this fight that haven't been punches where he's holding and hitting. Uh, even his jab, you know, he's not landing his jab. People talk about how he has such a great jab, but he's not landing a jab on Chris Algieri. He, I don't, I don't know how many jabs he's landed the whole fight. Um, I'm very inclined so far to say zero. Uh, Chris Algieri's not landing any either, but that's not the point, right? <clears throat> um, but anyway, um, I do want to get into the the round, but I want to address something from the second round. It was very obscure. Uh, I thought that uh, Chris Algieri was able to get in the way of that body shot that I thought, and you couldn't really see what was going on. But they're going to do um, a slow motion replay of one of those instances, and he catches them kind of with a cross there, and then that one hits him on top of the head. Uh, but then... Uh, Errol Spence does catch him with a really great straight left hand right there. Um, and I said originally that I thought that was a body shot because of the angle. It was, it was north-south. Uh, Chris Algieri being um, the southern boxer and um, Errol Spence being on in front of him. And, and you couldn't really see what was going on in the action. But Errol Spence did land some good shots right there. Um, but anyway, we're going to move on to the third round. Um, and uh, this one's uh, it's an interesting round. So... Again, <clears throat> Errol Spence. Look at the jab, right? Let's just focus on the jab real quick in real time. He's not even landing that as a punch, right? So he puts it on top of his glove, and that's not a punch, right? Then he comes in and puts his hand on top of his head, right? Tries to pull it down and throws a straight left that kind of scrapes the side of Algeria's head, you know, not landing or scoring punch. Then he kind of lands with this right hook. But you can see that it's with the inside of the glove. It's not turned over. Um, and Algeri, you know, obviously Algeri doesn't land anything either. But um, uh, he does do something really well while he's swatting down Algeri's jab. Um, and if he could turn that into like an actual punch uh, and part of his craft, something that he learns how to do, like uh, Mayweather's pull counter, um, he'd have something really solid right there um, as long as he's ready for like when, when people start getting his timing. Um, he's ready for the counter straight right hand. Uh, but anyway, uh, moving on. Um, Algeri trying to jab and set up his combo again. Throws the jab. Establishes lead foot dominance, but it's not a jab, remember. He's just pushing down his arm or his head and then goes to throw a body shot. The same exact technique that he's used throughout the fight. Establish lead foot dominance with the faux jab. Uh, throw a body shot or a head shot, whatever, whatever one he picks. Um, he kind of lands that one on the side. Uh, he does do something really good and see how he kind of gets out. Look at the angle that he comes in at, right? And then after he lands it, he rolls the hook kind of and then pivots out. Uh, and he shoots out. You know, he gets really far out there. That's a really good job. Um, I wasn't really paying attention to what Chris Algieri was doing with his own right hand, so but it's not important. But anyway... Uh, right after that, it looks like Spence is the one that landed. And Chris Algeri just walks in, throws a straight right to the body, left hook to the body, and Errol Spence just covers up and allows him to throw punches. 
you know. Um, that last one, uh, I'm inclined to believe that that was a scoring blow. Eh, it's questionable, but it doesn't matter. Um, that's a position that you basically never want to be in. Uh, we have seen Chris Algeria in a similar situation against the ropes, you know. Um, but he doesn't control his opponent uh, when he's coming in with the jab. He didn't. Um, he didn't try to counter punch at all. Whoops. Right. He just lets Chris Algieri walk in, uh, and that's also a product of the active guard that Chris Algieri has had. Right. So he he's having a much harder time timing him. Uh, so he doesn't even really react. And the reason that I'm pointing that out uh, is because it it goes to show you the difference between Errol Spence's guard when he's very stagnant with it. Um, and then anytime Errol Spence does anything, Chris Algieri reacts to it. He gets under the jab. He kind of gets in the way of the left hand sometimes. Um, but you see that he's reacting to it because he always knows when it's coming. Whereas Chris Algieri's very active guard is able to hide a lot of his punches. You know, that active guard being good, a good feint for him. Uh, anyway, moving on. Uh, same thing. Not a real jab. Look how he sticks it out there, puts his hand on top of his head holds him down, and then throws an uppercut. Uh, and why is he doing that? Because he's not really able to land punches um, on Chris Algieri to the head when, when he doesn't do that because he doesn't know how to set his punches up, right? Uh, every other combination that he's thrown has just been the same. <clears throat> and this, this also speaks to Chris Algieri's inability to deal with it, right? He's not countering him as well as he should be, uh, but it's just... The same jab combination, slide in, get head control or whatever. It's not really head control. It's, you know, holding your opponent and hitting. Um, even though Chris Algieri does land uh, his own punches here, he lands a right to the body and then a left hook to the body. Um, <clears throat> but Errol Spence uh, so far showing that he's, he's a very, I don't want to say exactly one-dimensional, but his offense is very one-dimensional. Uh, he does pivot off the line really well right there. Um, as you see, the, the angle that he comes in here, boom, boom, and then moves off. Um, and uh, Chris Algieri doing a very similar thing, moving off to his right, um, so matching him in that regard. Um, but anyway, again, oh, Chris Al or, um, Errol Spence not exactly countering him, right? Throws a jab, but just uses it to push down Chris Algieri's head. And I can't tell if he's punching here. I don't think he is, but... Uh, he shouldn't be, and he also shouldn't be, he shouldn't find himself in so many situations to be pushing his opponent's head down, you know, and look at this, what is this? The referee is breaking them, right? The referee is breaking them right here, and look at, he throws a freaking punch. He throws a freaking punch while the referee is breaking them, boom, touches gloves, and while they're close and he's touching gloves, Chris Algieri's like, oh, don't worry about it, bro, it's no big deal, and then immediately Spence just attacks him and starts throwing punches like an opportunist because he knows that Chris Algieri, even with his limited tools, right, uh, is able to nullify a lot of, of Errol Spence's punching, you know, and he's a puncher, remember? We're talking about, like, real boxing skills. Um, he doesn't know how to set his punches up. He, the only punches that he's been able to land have been the very simple and easy... Um, um, combination of what punches are open. Oh, you, the body shot's open because they think you're going for the head, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and then the right hook to the body, and then he moves off to the side. Um, so he takes any opportunity he can to kind of, you know, land some punches. He doesn't land that one. He does land this one, and I think he started it off with a jab, um, but that was, that was blocked. Again, same combination, not a jab, not a jab, overshooting his head, pulls his head down, and then, boom, throws an uppercut. Uh, and he's not being warned for this, you know, and he should be. He f Technically, he probably should have been disqualified already. But um, well, at the very least, lost two points already. And, again, jab, and he goes and he circles and brings it out, brings it way past Algieri, pulls him down, holds him down, and throws an uppercut. Again, again, throws another punch right there, holding his arm and hitting him again. 
Um, not none of this is is boxing, right? Like people want to cry foul about Andre Andre Berto versus Sean Porter. What Sean Porter was doing was like really high level boxing. You know, he did a great job. He worked Andre he, or Berto. Yeah, he worked him over like hardcore and used really high level boxing techniques to do it. You know, he's not as polished as his, in his craft as you know some fighters might be, uh, like like um, Roberto Duran or um, he's kind of like a like in that instance like a, a poor man's chocolatito, you know. But um, but the craft that Errol Spence is working on and this holding and hitting, this is this is not boxing. This is not boxing, and this is what everyone's clamoring about. But anyway, um, the more I get into it, the whole like holding and hitting and how people hold this guy in such a high regard, the more frustrating it is. But anyway, jab, uh, lead foot dominance, but it's not a real jab, remember? There. Not a real jab, goes to pull him down, takes lead foot dominance, throws the left to the body again, throws a right hook to the body. Good for him for finding the, the punch. Um, it's unfortunate that Chris Algieri is not making an adjustment to it. He's not countering with his own uppercut. Uh, also, what he's not doing is he's not controlling uh, Chris Algieri. Chris Algieri, I mean, um, Errol Spence. I mean, Errol Spence is like twice his size, to be honest. Uh, so he's going to have a hard time doing that. Um, but there are a lot of things that Chris Algieri should do. Maybe he should just take a step back or shoot off to an angle and throw his own right hand, you know. Um, or just literally smash into him. Just run into him and grab him, you know. He'll probably get worn to shit for that. That's a really clever move right here. Boom, boom, throws those, pivots off. And now uh, Chris Algieri has to sh move away, even though he was um, the one starting the offense. Even though Errol Spence doesn't land those punches. Um, but Chris Algieri has to move off and retreat uh, because now he's off the line. Right? And in order to reset himself, he's going to be putting himself directly in line to being nailed by huge punches by Spence. So that was some good, like, um, you know, pivoting or, you know, mid-combat um, angle changing. But again, same punch, right? Same combination. Not a real jab. Now, that one looked more real than most of them. Uh, and misses the left hand this time. Chris Algieri actually making an adjustment, so I'm proud of him. <clears throat> now this is interesting right here. Probes with it, gets him to react. Oh no, and then what does he do? Holds his freaking head down, and I don't know if he throws a punch there. It doesn't matter, but this is what we've been, what you should be waiting for if you're Errol Spence, right? Boom, faints it, gets Errol Spence to duck, and this is where he should be watching Chris Algieri, and then throw his his left uppercut, and that's how you land a clean punch. You put you make your opponent react wherever he goes when he's reacting. You punch there, right? Very simple, right? It's so simple. Like me explaining it to you guys, you guys probably think this guy's a fucking idiot. He's just saying exactly what you should be doing anyway, but it's true. That's exactly what you should be doing. You know, like if you look at like not in this stop motion aspect that I'm showing it to you. Boom. And right there, there's a huge shot, you know. Uh, but he doesn't take it because he doesn't know how to probe. You know, it's good that he didn't throw the shot and just miss or hit him on the glove or risk Algeria moving back. Like, it's good that he was watching him, but he didn't do anything with that information. Then he just holds him and then throws, you know, pulls him, pulls him back so he's off balance and then throws another uppercut right here. Uh, he should have been uh, warned again. Very blatant. Um, Chris Algeria with some heart. He's like, ah, I'll try and throw some punches. Uh, not really anything there. And again, jab. That looked like a real jab to me. Probing jab, right? Keep him busy while you get lead foot dominance. And then gets a left hand through the guard. Um, kind of looks, you know, that he kind of hurt Chris Algeria right there, but I'm not sure. Um, Chris Algeria throws a shot, and he slips it. And if that punch lands, that left hand, that's a pretty um, that's a pretty dope ass like maneuver right there, right? Jabs on him, keeps his hand out there for control, but also balance makes his pivot easier, right? And then just crashes a straight left hand into him. That's a fucking awesome technique. If he can learn to to hone that and do that against other fighters, uh, make that part of his craft, 
That's really sneaky, man. Really sneaky. Um, hopefully they show like um, a replay of it. That'd be awesome. But um, then again, he does actually throw a jab right there. Gets low like he's going to throw a body shot. And then eats a counter on the top of the head. Um, I can't tell if his counter makes it. The video quality for me is like so much worse than it is for once it gets uploaded onto YouTube. So when I rewatch these videos, I'm like, oh my god, of course he landed that punch, or of course he didn't land that punch. But the quality that I see when I'm recording them is just so much worse. But anyway, um, Chris Algieri lands this uh, counter left hook, but has no power on it because his tools are not very sharp, especially since he's being worn down. Um, and then catches him with a good jab, right, but doesn't commit to the right hand. Um, that's a good technique, you know. Don't just let your opponent walk out of the exchange, right? You want to control their head. I guess it's sometimes it's better if you can make that control a punch, right? But if Chris Algieri had the same notion, you know, at the same time, he could have countered him, you know. Um, so you kind of just want to push off, you know. <laughs> I'm surprised that Errol Spence didn't just hold his head down. But again, uh, Errol Spence slides in, misses the jab. Holds him down, and I don't know if he throws a punch there. I don't think he does. Uh, no, he does not, but tries to put all his weight onto Chris Algieri's head. Chris Algieri makes an adjustment and stands up. <clears throat> Again, not a jab. Swings it over. Uh, and I, I'm not going to analyze that. I can't see the referees in the way. Let's just say Errol Spence lands a punch. Good for him. Um, lead foot dominance. Throws a straight left to the guard. And what does he do? Has no defense. I think he does land that one punch. I think Chris Algieri smothers the, le the right hook. And then he eats a body shot. Uh, Errol Spence does. I don't think he lands his left hand body shot. And then Chris Algieri lands a left hook. Boom. Uh, because Errol Spence has no defense. None. You know, everyone talks about tools and how good Errol Spence is and how he has good fundamentals. But when he gets his opponents on the ropes, he has literally no defense. All he's trying to do is land huge punches. Um, maybe that's marketing. Maybe he knows that people want to see a big puncher, so he's just going ham. Um, maybe he also... Uh, doesn't respect Chris Algieri's punching power. That's not for us to say, right? All we can call is what we see. And here we see um, a fighter in Chris Algieri has, you know, C minus um, tools, you know, speed and power and whatever. Uh, basically, like countering Errol Spence at will. Um, and Kel Brook is a way better counter puncher. There he goes. He doesn't set the punch up. So what happens? Chris Algieri sees it coming a mile away. Also, because any variation, and look at this. Look how wide open he is for this, you know, for a counter. Also, remember, any variation in Errol Spence's guard in any movement is indicative of a punch. He just telegraphs all his punches. Uh, there he goes. Uh, probe, probe shot, and then throws the body shot. That's really smart. Um, but what happens right after? He eats a huge left hook, and it's not that huge, right? That's, I'm, like, overstating it. But look, look at how it smacks his head around. You know, Chris Algieri lands a very solid shot. Kel Brook is a much better counter puncher and a much bigger puncher. Um, backs him up, lead foot dominance, probing jab, all his weight on his left leg. Same combination. It's the only thing he's landed this whole fight that hasn't been a holding and hitting, right? Eats a counter right there, I think. Let's see it again. Yep, eats a counter. Maybe he gets in the way of it. It doesn't matter. Um, he does land a body shot as, as uh, Algieri's moving on the way out. Um, I'm not sure what he's thinking right here, why he, he shoots out there, but whatever. Uh, again, he blocks that shot, and then Chris Algieri comes in again with another left hook. Landing another shot, kind of throws Errol Spence off balance a little bit. Might even freaking hurt him. Look at his legs. Who knows? Boom. Kind of stumbles. But now he's right where he needs him. He wants him to be. 
Um, so you can start throwing those huge punches, but it just lets them off the ropes. Jab, jab, misses the right hand. Uh, does he keep his hand on top of him? I don't know, but that's probably a pretty like wrecking ball of a right hook right there. I would not want to get hit by that. And let's be clear, okay? I do kind of think that Errol Spence is a mediocre fighter, but no, I would never say that to his face because he would fucking knock me out, man. He's a hard puncher, man. Fucking hits hard. Um, again, any variation in um, in his his guard and you know it's a punch so what does he have to do all he has to do is dip down can't really tell if it lands or it doesn't land oops I went too far back kind of looks like it touches him but not a huge shot right there <clears throat> not Jerry missing Errol Spence missing and putting him in, throwing him in a headlock and literally, like, trying to squeeze his freaking head off. I don't know. I would tell him to do the same thing, but I guess, like, after seeing so many other fouls, you know, it just kind of gets a little bit old, you know. Here he is, throws a jab, leaves his hand out there to control his head, and kind of takes, like, partial right hand, like, it kind of touches him on the side of the head and then slides off. So good for him for being able to roll it, and I think landing a really good body shot and changing angle off of the line, right? So he does that, boom, and now he's off the line, change direction. Um, so there's like a little bit of defense in there. But again, uh, Kelbrook is a much better counter puncher than Chris Algieri. Again, misses the jab. That's not really a jab holding him. I don't know if he throws any punches, but some more holding, headlock kind of stuff, whatever. Ooh. Puts his hand out expecting uh, Chris Algieri to jab with them or move his head in so he can pull it down. Ooh, did he land a punch there? Same thing. Over. Oh, might land the jab there. And then does not look like he lands a straight left. They kind of tie up. I'm not even going to pay attention to what um, what Algeri's landing, if he's landing anything. But now he's being the he's the one being held right there. Chris Algeri's catching on. Uh, I think he eats that body shot, but another body shot. And that's interesting because now I guess uh, Chris Algeri in this moment is expecting Errol Spence to hold, and because he's holding Errol Spence, Errol Spence is actually free to punch and lands some pretty big shots. That left hand, man. Poor guy. Boom. That's a big shot for sure. Whoops. Uh, misses those shots. And again, not setting these punches up. Just kind of going wild. Basic head movement. I think he lands a body shot there. Another body shot. Um, did he hold his head right there? No, I don't know. One more time. Sorry, guys. Yeah, he kind of has his arm on him. You can see his left arm. Or his uh, right arm. Holds him down. Holding and hitting again. Um, I don't know if Errol Spence is going to get away with this in the UK. You know, if he does get away with this shit in the UK, then he's got a pretty good chance of beating uh, Kel Brook. Uh, Kel Brook has a good... Uh, a good holding and hitting game too. Like, let's not get it twisted. But I do think that Errol Spence, on average, is a is a bigger puncher than uh, Kel Brook. Um, and we'll see some some instances when I do that film study where Kel Brook is fighting on the inside and he gets tagged by some easy shots. Um, not always the most aware. Um, and in those instances, if if Errol Spence is allowed to hold and hit him, he's gonna he's gonna crack him, man. Uh, those are some big shots that he's hitting him with. But anyway, um, as far as the film study goes, um, Errol Spence showing that he's very ordinary. You know, maybe it's just this fight. Maybe, you know, he wanted to pull a John Jones and do coke all night the night before, and he's not in his game right now. Um, but um, 
but showing that the only way that he's really landing effective shots uh, is off that one combination, you know, jab, faint jab, lead foot dominance, and throw, throw a one-two, you know, or a two-three rather. Um, but not really able to use his probing, not really able to use the fainting to set punches up. Um, and for the most part, relying on his tools, you know, his speed uh, and his technique um, to, to land his offense. And it's the offense that's, you know, the very basic, the easy to read uh, punches that are always there. Um, and uh, showing that his defense is very poor. If someone like Chris Algieri, who has such poor tools, is able to land as many punches against Errol Spence, how many punches is is a much sharper and quicker and harder puncher? Uh, how much is he going to be able to affect Errol Spence's game plan? Um, anyway, um, if you guys saw anything that I didn't, let me know in the comments. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Um, and let me know what you think. Um, I love reading your guys' comments. And and uh, chatting with you about it and, you know, tangents and whatnot. But, um, yeah, let me know. Thanks, guys.